Hi, it's Colin Coward. I started the volume to bring you some of the most authentic voices in sports. While you're here, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks. I was thinking about this today with Matt Stafford, and he was a pretty polarizing player the majority of his career. Remember when he got drafted, the uh, rookie wage scale was not in place. You could make like 60, 70, 80 million dollars as a rookie. You remember the contracts? Guys like Matt Stafford, Sam Bradford, and the Dominican Sue were signing in the mid 2000s. They were immediately making more than the majority of the NFL. And then he played forever in Detroit. Let's face it, historic wasteland. Their two best players in the history of the franchise retired at 30 Barry Sanders and Calvin Johnson. Tells you everything you need to know. Now, I, I, listen, I feel for Lions fans. The highlight of their year every single season is, is Thanksgiving Day. And I'm a believer they should get that game. Like, they're, they're grandfathered in. I have no problem with it. But when Matt Stafford went to his, I guess, management owner at the end of the season last year, before Dan Campbell was hired and said, it's time for a change. Well, listen, sometimes we all need a change. You know, I've, I've changed career multiple times. I bet anyone listening to this under 40 has changed careers a lot. My generation jumps around jobs. My parents had the same job my entire life. My mom worked at the same place for 30 years. My dad had the same job his entire adult life. Like that that generation, they did one thing. We change a lot. We're not quite like coaches, but we are not set in our ways. We we can adapt and change on the fly. We're we're more open-minded. And sometimes when you make a change, it doesn't always work. And sometimes when you do make a change, it works. We've all been relationships. Anyone listening to this, unless you married like your high school sweetheart, you've probably broken up with someone. And if you're married, you dated different people. Well, there's typically a reason that you break up with someone. You think you, I don't know whether you can do better, whether that person isn't right for you. And you just think that, you know, it's, it's just best to make a change. Now, you never know how it's going to play out. Sometimes it can be scary, But in the sport of football, unlike dating, well, kind of like dating, when you hit the open market, you kind of find out how valuable you are. And when when Matt Stafford hit the open market and it was clear he was available for trades, you know the two guys that were at the front of the line willing to trade the farm for him? Sean McVay and Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan, the 49ers, desperately wanted Matt Stafford. Sean McVay had the inside track because ultimately they wanted Jared Goff and not Jimmy Garoppolo. Now, you could argue that didn't age that well. Because the 49ers would have done the exact same trade. Two ones, a three, and Jimmy Garoppolo for Matt Stafford. But it was kind of an inside job because the former GM for the Rams was now the GM of the Lions, and they did the deal. And let's face it, during this season, I'm someone that had been critical of Matt Stafford. And I love the talent. I, I know players who have been around him in Detroit. They swear by the guy. They love the guy. I, I root for the human being. I root for humans as much as players. Right, If you're a great player, but I find out you're kind of a, a slappy, a bad guy, like I, I'm not a huge fan. But when I, and because I have access to people, when I go, Middlecoff, you love this guy. This guy is awesome. It's why, I've, it's why I pivoted so hard on Lamar Jackson. I started hearing stories from people around him. They're like, bro, this is the greatest guy we've ever been around. I'm like, fuck, I'm in. You know, so I naturally root for good guys who are talented. But then you watch the season, and let's face it, he struggled to shake the Detroit thing. Like, that was a problem. He looked like Detroit Matt Stafford at times, even down the stretch of the season, right? That Ravens game, the pick six, the Niners game, the debacle that was week 18. But they still won the division, and they still, you know, controlled their own destiny in the sense they had a home playoff game. And then that Arizona game, and we can say whatever they want, Arizona was a sinking ship, and they were. He was awesome in that game, completely dialed. And then the game yesterday against Tampa, Awesome. Biggest throw of his career. Obviously, he'd never even been to the second round of the playoffs. The dime he throws a Cooper Cup. You can say all you want. He's wide open. We've seen Emmanuel Sanders was once wide open. Jimmy Garoppolo threw it over his head. Wes Welker was once wide open. Tom Brady threw it over his head. Like, not every pass is perfect, even from great players. So, we saw Aaron Rodgers. Like, he hasn't been perfect in the playoffs. Matt Stafford needed to hit that pass, and he did. Sean McVay changed the guy's life. Changed his career forever. First year, boom, NFC Championship game. And think about this. He goes to the Rams and that mindset of we'll trade any picks, we'll do whatever it takes to win. Kind of like an NBA team, just trading first-round picks. They don't give a shit. 
well, they've already been proven right. Who cares about the first round pick if you're in the NFC, if you're hosting the NFC championship game? And here's the other thing. As the season went on, lose Robert Woods. Now, they didn't know this at the time, but they were super aggressive to get Odell Beckham. Listen, I'm not the biggest OBJ guy, but he's looked pretty good the last three or four weeks. Looks really good. He was really good yesterday. He's been good the last two weeks. And then, you know, their defense needs a little oomph. Second, third round pick, whatever. We're living in the present. It's all about winning the championship now. Our owner just bought or paid for a five, six billion dollar stadium. Here's a two, here's a three. And I thought it was kind of crazy. I'm like, and listen, I thought it was wrong. This guy's going to be a free agent. He's not quite the same player. Those are valuable picks. Well, now, who gives a shit about a pick at the end of the second or the third round when Vaughn Miller is getting you sacks every single game? And he looks like a Pro Bowl level player. It worked. No team has been more aggressive with draft capital and cash to try to improve their squad on and off the field. SoFi Stadium, I've, I've been to a lot of places in really the world. I did a little, you know, traveling to Europe. That, it's one of the most remarkable sights I've ever seen. And I, I've seen the Sistine Chapel. I've seen the Colosseum in Rome. Uh, I've seen Jerry's Palace. I've seen some pretty cool places. That fucking thing blows you away. And then on the field, every chip in the middle of the table. Stan keeps giving them the go-ahead. They keep risking the picks. It's 100% worth it. Because right now, they're sitting 60 minutes away. Now, they're basically their rival. McVay beat them three or four times. Shanahan's won the last six games. Uh, That game that they won this year, really the two games the Niners won this year, their season was in the brink. Early in the season, they were three and five. Played them on Monday night, beat the crap out of them. Week 18, they literally had to win to get into the playoffs. So that there's going to be, if if the Rams had won that game, they would not be playing the Niners this week. Think about that. So th- th- there is going to be things of this game, it's got a little bit of a vibe of Seattle 49ers way back with Harbaugh and Pete Carroll because of the rivalry those coaches had. Now it's a little different. Once upon a time, Harbaugh you know, and Pete Carroll had the what's your deal moment. At the, uh, at the 50-yard line, Stanford, USC. So there was some buildup, some Pac-12. This is kind of, these guys have worked together, even though they're, it feels like they're friends. Uh, I don't think they talk that much regularly anymore. I, this, this is awesome. I mean, I, I, I can't wait. Enormous moment for Matt Stafford. Like, ultimately, Jimmy Garoppolo is always going to be a really polarizing player. But Matt Stafford, some people talk about him like one of the best players in the league. You win the NFC Championship game. You you go to a Super Bowl. You know, he's going to start validating his career and his critics. It's going to really look like Detroit were the Village Idiots that entire time. Thanks for watching 3 and Out. You can check out the podcast below in the description. And make sure you subscribe right now to the Volumes YouTube channel.